All right, let's take a look at uh, installing everything you're going to need to uh, be able to do Android development on your own computer. Um, here I am on our, on our install page. Um, I have a bunch of links to various things, so we'll need the latest version of Java, Java 7. Um, clicking on that will take us to that page. Um, I'll actually open up all the links uh, to start off with. We're going to need Eclipse, and we're going to need the Android development kit. Okay. Downloading these is fairly straightforward. Um, there are a couple little, little things. Um, so for instance, you know, here we have the Java SE 7, um, version 7. So we're now then we want the JDK. That's the one that you definitely want. Um, not just the JRE, the JDK has the Java compiler. Uh, go ahead and click download. Um, once you do that, then you're just going to want to scroll down here and you need to accept the license agreement. Um, and then you simply pick the particular version for uh, the ver the operating system that you're using. Um, since I'm using Windows 7 64-bit, um, I would actually download this version. I'm not going to download it here because I've actually already downloaded all of these things. Um, namely, I've put them on my uh, on my desktop in a folder called Android. So there's my there's what I would uh, would have downloaded. For Eclipse, um, similarly, if we uh, if we scroll down, you'll see there are a number of different flavors of Eclipse. Um, the one that we want actually is the Eclipse IDE for Java developers. Again, I'm using a 64-bit version of Windows, so I'll grab the 64-bit version of that. Okay, we come to here, then we can I can, I can click my particular mirror link. Um, it picks this uh, sort of semi-randomly. So, uh, but yeah, you basically then again want to click this and ultimately that will download that, uh, give you the Eclipse, Java, Juno, um, etc. Okay, finally, you need the Android developer, um, the SDK. Okay, so that's over here. Um, once again, we can go ahead and just click on that button, um, and you can do the save file, and that will save accordingly. Again, not going to do that because I already have, uh, have that stuff here. Now that we uh, we have downloaded everything, let's start with uh, let's start with installing the first uh, the first bit of tools, uh, namely Java. Okay, um, again, when you go back over to the Java download page here, um, if I just back up one to uh, to the original page, um, notice there are installation instructions. Um, for the most part, this is a pretty straightforward um, install. The uh, the only thing that uh, that you may actually want to be concerned with is um, is setting up an environment variable. So we're going to do that here, and and these directions actually show uh, how to do that, namely the JDK installation for uh, Microsoft Windows. Um, so if you go here, um, you'll see there's actually a bunch of stuff. Notice this little part here updating the path environment variable which it says is optional um honestly it's best to just go ahead and do that um so there's kind of the directions for that but let me walk you through this okay so now that we have that um let's go ahead and i'm just going to run the installer um yes it's asking me for uh for my administrator password And I'm just going to accept the defaults. Notice it's going to the C drive. Um, there's the actual uh, there's the actual path. I'm going to actually kind of want to take note of that because that's going to become important later when we need to set the set the path. Um, <clears throat> Um, so it just asked me, yes, uh, do I actually want to install the, install, um, the JRE there as well? Yes, I do. So I'll go ahead and allow it to do that. Okay, so we got stuff um, successfully installed. So I'll go ahead and click Close. You'll notice in the background it's opening up my browser. Um, it's actually taking me to the uh, to the registration page for uh, for Java. You you don't actually need to register Java to uh, to make this work. Um, so it'll go through all this and and uh, you can actually just uh, close that out. 
Okay, so now we need to uh, now we need to actually do those those little manipulations of the environment variables. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go to uh, to the start and uh, I'm going to do a search for environment variables, right? And notice it says uh, I edit the system environment variables. That's the one that I actually want. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that again. It's going to ask me for my admin password. Okay, and I get into a setting that looks like this. Okay, then I'm going to come here to environment variables. Okay. And you see I have a, a bunch of stuff here, right? So I'm going to go down to system variables, this section here. Um, and bit, since I don't have Java on this, uh, this particular machine, um, you'll notice. Uh, so what I need to do is basically to create a new environment variable. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to select new. Okay. Now the variable name, um, this is, this is the important part. You want to make sure to get the spelling right and all of that. Okay. So in all capitals, Java underscore home okay that's the in, that's the variable name um, this Java home basically sets on your system where where by default Java is installed a lot of Java tools will actually make use of this to uh, to to figure uh, to basically figure out or look for the uh, the version of Java that you have on your system so it's good to actually have set okay now um, what do we set this to? What is its value? Well, basically, we need to set it to the uh, to the value of where Java itself is actually installed. Okay, so um, recall I, I mentioned that when you're installing it, you want to make note of this. Um, but generally, it's going to go on your C drive. Okay, and um, depending on uh, whether you're using if you're using a 64-bit version of Windows, then you'll have these two different uh, folders. And if you use the 64-bit version of Java, it will be in the program files rather than the program files X. 86. X86 are the 16-bit uh, programs. So we'll go over here to um, to our 64-bit version. Right there's our Java folder, and inside here you'll notice we have two folders: uh, a JDK and a JRE. The JDK is the one that we want. So I'm just going to uh, double-click on that, and that shows me uh, there's my Java install. Okay, so a really easy way of of basically getting this set up now is I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to click with uh, the left mouse button, and you'll notice that actually selected this so now I'm going to right click and uh, select copy now I can minimize this I can go back over to my variable value right click and select paste right now I have that in there um, and very easy to uh, to get set up okay so I click OK all right so I have my Java home the other thing is I'm also gonna I'm also going to uh, to do one other thing in terms of the system variables to make it easier for our system to find the Java tools and that is to add the uh, the Java directory the Java um, binary directory to the to the system path okay the Windows systems path right which is right here um, simply is where Windows will look by default for uh, for various commands okay so I'm going to go ahead and edit this and uh, yeah there's a lot of stuff in there I'm just gonna hit uh, the end key to come all the way down to here I'm gonna put a semicolon and then I'm going to type out percent sign and then again all in caps my Java home Java underscore home another percent sign um, a backslash and a bin okay so this basically says go to whatever the value of Java home is that's what the percent signs are slash bin so look in the bin directory add that to the system path okay so having done that um, I click OK that's been added I can click OK there click OK here to close this and now I can actually test to just see if if Java is installed and running properly so over here I'm just gonna run a command prompt and uh, I'm going to run Java so that runs the Java virtual machine, a dash, and version. So if everything is set up properly, if my path is set and so forth, then this should tell me um, what version of Java I'm actually running. Okay, and there it is. We see that our Java version is 1.7.0 underscore 07. That's the version that we just installed. So Java is now successfully installed. Okay. Now, once that once we know that that's successful, we can close this, um, just like we would any other window. Um, and now that we have Java installed, we should be able to install um, Eclipse. Um, now, Eclipse doesn't really have an installer per se. Okay, so ultimately, what you need to do is uh, is basically you'll see it's just a zip file. So we're simply going to uh, to unzip this um, and put it in the uh, in the location that we want. 
So uh, what I can do is I can double click on this. You'll see that uh, inside here, right, we see that it is a it is a zip file. Not only do we see the dot zip, but we also see the little zipper on the uh, folder telling us that's a that's a compressed zip. Okay, in here um, it has a folder named Eclipse, um, and inside there is well Eclipse itself. Okay, so basically um, the idea is you can put this really wherever um, wherever you want it to be installed. Um, so we'll put it in sort of the standard place. Um, that is that uh, I'm going to come back over here to uh, to my window okay you'll notice uh, that this is the window that had uh, had Java open um, again if you didn't have that open if you happen to close that uh, no big deal just go to computer go to your C drive um, again since I've downloaded the 64-bit version of Eclipse I'm gonna put it in program files rather than the 16-bit okay so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, is to take my Eclipse folder inside the that's inside the compressed zip, and I'm just going to drag that out onto the desktop, um, and that will basically unzip um, all of those files. Now it'll actually take a few seconds to do that. All right, once that's done. Um, let me just back this up to there. We'll, I'll still keep this open, just minimize that. Um, I'm going to want to go back to C. Um, there's my program files directory, and I'm just going to drag Eclipse down into the program files folder. Um, yes, I want to do that. And it's moving it right into there. Okay, so if I go in here and I can check, there's the uh, there's the actual Eclipse folder itself, and um, here's all of the uh, all the files for Eclipse. Now, the kind of downside of of this install is that um, it doesn't give you one of these nice little. Uh, program groups or icons in your in your start menu. Um, if you want that, that's actually really simple to add. Um, so over here, uh, notice I'm on my start menu. I'm going to go to all programs. I'll right click and select open all users. That gives me a window that looks like this. I'll go to programs. Um, and now in here, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of right click in one of these white areas here. I'm going to go to new and say that I want a new folder. Um, and I'm going to name it Eclipse. Okay. So there's my Eclipse folder. Uh, I'll hit F5 to sort of sort that back into where it's supposed to be. Um, then what I'm going to do is go back over to my program files Eclipse and I will right click on that and what I'm going to say is that I want to create a shortcut. And so I create a shortcut. There is my shortcut file. Um, so all I need to do is drag my shortcut over to here. Um, again, yes, with the administrator password okay and I can kind of rename this tidy this up so that it looks nicer when it appears so uh, basically just delete everything up to the Eclipse um, yes we're gonna do that okay once I have that that means that I can come over here I can go to all programs and you'll see there is my Eclipse um, folder and there's Eclipse itself Okay, so I can click that and run Eclipse All right, now that we have Eclipse installed, let's install the Android Development Toolkit, the SDK itself. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of uh, my Program Files Eclipse window. Um, I'm gonna go back over to my Android uh, folder. And uh, here we have that installer that we had downloaded for that, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and run this. Um, yes, I wanna run that. Okay. Um, notice it was able to find our um, our toolkit, so that's good. Okay. Um, it says, "Is this where you want to actually put this?" So notice it's actually going to put it in uh, in my user folder, app data, etc. That's um, that's certainly fine. Um, some people will also install this in program files. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it with the uh, with the defaults. Okay. Um, and it will add add a start menu option, so that's fine as well. Okay, 
Notice then it has uh, has stuff for start the SDK manager. Um, this is a step that you're going to need to do. This one is going to take a little bit of time, but let's uh, let's actually kind of go through this, and I'll show you the things that uh, you're going to want to uh, to install. So the, the SDK itself um, basically gives you kind of the basic tools, but then what you have are various sort of images for, um, for the various levels of Android um, that you're going to develop for. So notice, for instance, here's Android 4.1, the latest version, Jelly Bean, right? It's, it's officially known as API 16. Um, and then there are, and so there are all of the, uh, all of the things that come for that. Um, and then there are other versions as well, right? So we go all the way back down to notice there's an Android 1.5 right we have our extras um, some of the things that uh, one of the big things that you're going to definitely want in here is the uh, the Google USB driver okay you definitely need that especially if you're going to uh, you're going to need that if you're going to hook up um, your Android device to um, to your machine um, so this basically allows the Android development toolkit the SDK to uh, to talk to um, to your Android device directly Okay, now in terms of which of these you're going to install, if you take a look at the Ditel book, um, they basically have you select all of them. You can do that, it's kind of overkill, quite honestly, to install. Um, 4.1 is the latest version of Jelly Bean. Um, we're going to grab uh, one of the latest versions from the 3 branch, and our other one we're going to grab is 2.3.3. Uh, the other thing you want to make sure that is selected is uh, the Google USB driver. So it comes up, it says, all right, do you actually want to install all of these things? We absolutely do. So I'm just going to go ahead and say accept all um, and click install. And, and now it's just a waiting game. It's simply wait for um, those particular things to be installed on your system. When you're installing, if you get, uh, if you get dialogues like this that ask you for um, for your moto dev account um, information you you don't actually need that stuff um, what that actually is are if you were if you were working with certain Motorola specific um, parts you'd actually want those so the way basically of getting around this is you just do a cancel here um, and anytime you see those just cancel those out um, and and then you should be good to go Okay, so once you got those things installed, we can go ahead and close the uh, SDK manager. Um, now, the the next step is that we need to set up um, profiles for the different virtual devices. Um, the idea is this way: what you have are um, fake Android or emulated Android. Um, platforms to actually be able to test your applications on okay so all we're going to do is we're going to go to the SDK tools and you're going to go to the AVD um, manager okay so when we get here um, notice basically we don't have any existing um, any existing devices all right all we need to do is we can go ahead and say new um, we will start off actually with the targets. Okay, so you'll notice here under targets, um, I have a bunch of different things. Um, I'm going to start off with sort of the highest level here, uh, namely Android 4.1, um, the latest version of Jelly Bean. Okay, so I select that, and so I'll just uh, give it a name, something like Android underscore 4.1. I can leave most of this stuff in. Now, here's one of the big tricks with uh, with this. Um, what you'll find is the first time you run your uh, your virtual device or your emulator, um, it'll actually take a bit of time to to run. Um, and oftentimes, without any other configuration, every time you run it, it takes kind of a lot of time to run. Um, the big trick is to enable uh, this thing called snapshot. Okay, what this does is basically saves the state of the emulator. Um, which means that uh, then after you run it the first time, from then on it runs uh, runs actually a bit quicker. Okay, so I'll go ahead and say create AVD, um, and yes, it did in fact create that. There it is. Okay, now I'm going to create a couple more of these. Um, namely, I'm going to create one for the um, for the let's see the 3.2.
Android underscore 3.2. Again, make sure to enable the snapshot. And we will create our um, Android 2.3.3. And enable that snapshot. Okay, do create AVD. Right. And now we have our various uh, various virtual devices created. Go ahead and close that window and we're ready for the next step. Okay, one last step to uh, configuration and then we should be good for, uh, for creating our applications. Um, I'm going to start up Eclipse. Um, I'll go ahead and, uh, in this case, I'm just going to accept the default for the workspace. And the first time Eclipse comes up, uh, basically it gives us kind of this little welcome thing. We can just go directly to the workbench. All right, so the next step is um, to install the plugin that allows Eclipse to talk to the Android Development Toolkit. Um, and again, it's fairly straightforward, uh, basically just a couple of little steps that we have to do. Okay, so now that we have Eclipse running, we're going to go to the Help menu, and we're going to say that we want to install new software. Um, and then we're just going to go over here and click Add. Okay. Now, it asks us for information about the repository that we want to add. Basically, this is the website that has, uh, has Eclipse plugins. Okay, so we're going to say um, this is for the ADT, the Android Development Toolkit. Um, in terms of the location, back here on our, um, on our install page, if we scroll down past all of this stuff, we'll see that we have the Eclipse plugin repository, and we're just going to grab that URL. I'm going to say copy and come back over here and I'll just paste that right in. Okay, so that's the URL that we want. We click OK and now we'll contact that website to, uh, to actually find the tools that we need. Okay, so you'll notice um, actually it comes up with a couple of different options. It comes up with the developer tools and the NDK plugins. We don't need the NDK. NDK stands for Native Development Kit. Um, we're not doing that, but we do want the developer tools. So we can go ahead and select that and then we'll click Next. Um, these are all the things that it's going to install. That's fine. Um, and we'll basically accept the, uh, the terms for the licenses. And it goes through and installs the software. Um, this is fine. You don't have to worry about the fact that it's unsigned. Just go ahead and click OK. It'll go through the, uh, the rest of this. Notice it does want to restart Eclipse, and, and you do need to do that, so go ahead and click uh, Yes. Okay, once again, select the default workspace. Okay, so now we need to uh, need to basically just tell it where the uh, where the Android SDK is. So I'll say use existing SDK, and I'll go over here to browse. Um, here's my home directory, and uh, if I scroll to app data, um, and then go to local. In local here, I have um, I have Android SDK. Right, notice it's under the Android folder, so I select that. Um, notice it simply says configure SDK, that means we're good to go. Or I have my next button, so I can click next. Um, you can decide if you're going to send usage data, I'm going to select no, um, and then click finish. 
this point it's just uh, finishing up its setup you'll see the uh, you'll see the post create init going on here um, and now we basically have our um, we have our Android development toolkit plugin installed for Eclipse the next step is that we simply need to uh, to try creating a basic Android app and see if it works <laughs>